Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp in with Unity video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be covering constants and enumerations. But before we dive into that, let's talk about our previous task. In the previous video, I gave you the assignment of creating a public variable in the inspector. This variable would either be one or two, indicating player one or player two. And you're going to create a switch statement based on that choice. So if it switched to one, it would say, welcome player one. If it was part two, it would say, welcome player two. And if there was none selected, then it would say, such as please select player. Okay, let's do this right now. I'm going to open up mono develop here, and I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna call this, we'll just call it player, and this is gonna be a type of int. Next, what we'll do is we'll delete this since we're not using this. And we'll be using this other switch statement later in this video. Okay, the way this is gonna work is we're gonna do a switch and we're gonna switch on the player variable like so. Remember, we gotta add an opening brace and closing brace. Now we're gonna do case one. And remember, after the one, we're gonna provide a colon. For this, we'll simply just write debug log and we'll just simply say begin player one. And of course, once we're done with our code in the case statement, we're just gonna put a break afterwards. And we're going to do the same for player two. Finally, we want to add a default case. For instance, if the player had entered zero or 10 and so forth. To do this, we simply type a default like so, and we'll just print out the message, please select player. And again, I don't need to put a break here but it's just good habit to do so. Okay, with that all set, we're gonna return back to Unity here, and we have an error, so let's just check out our error. And we'll clear out the console, and let's run the game. I'm gonna to switch to my scene tab, I'll select the cube, and in my inspector, you can see here, we have player zero. I'm gonna put one like so, and now let's disable the cube. Here it says, begin player one. Okay, let's put two. We'll re-enable the cube and disable it again. It says, begin player two. Now let's change this to 10. We'll re-enable and now disable and we have please select player like so. In this video, I'll be talking about constants and enumerations. And we're gonna start off with constants. So what is the purpose of a constant? Oftentimes, you're gonna be working in code where you have a value that you don't want to change. Let's say, for instance, you were working with pi in your equations. You wouldn't want that number to shift somewhere along in your program. The way to avoid this is by creating a constant variable. That means once you assign a value to this variable, this value cannot change. And if you try to change it throughout your program, you'll get a compile error. Why is this useful? Well, it's better to receive an error during the compilation of your programming versus the running. Because if there was an error during the running, that could cause your program to crash. Whereas an error during the compile stage we can see what is actually happening and then correct it before that code is then turned into a binary that other people will use. So the way we do this is we use the keyword const and we put this before our variable name. So in this case, we're gonna put const double pi equals 3.141. And then if you want to add any more, you can add more numbers to that. Now we can also assign the results of an expression to a const. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to take someone's birthday and then we wanted to add like 20 years to it. Well, we could do that. We could say const int age equals, let's say, 1980 plus 20. Then the results of that expression will then be stored in age. Let's say if we were working with variables, for instance, if birthday equals 1980, we could still do const int age equals birthday plus 20. Now, if we tried to change the age variable in any other way, we would then get a compile error. When working with constants, generally speaking, people use camel case here. You start with the lowercase first, and then they 
uppercase every other word part of that variable, as you've seen throughout this series. Some people prefer to have the first letter be capitalized. Again, this is really according to the standards of the project you're working on. But for now, if you can safely put the first name as being lowercase. Other languages, you'll see people actually capitalize the entire word. So instead of age being lowercase, it would be age all uppercase. And that indicates that that's a constant. Again, we don't do that in C-sharp, but you will see that be done in other languages. In fact, some other language conventions have people put underscore characters between words so that it really emphasize that that's a constant. Constants are very useful, and you'll be using them a lot. But another tool in our toolbox is called enumerations. Let's say we're creating a role-playing game, and in this role-playing game, we have weapons. And we have, just say, a limited amount of weapons. Let's say we have a sword and a mace. Now we could create integers for each of these weapons. We could say sword equals one, mace equals one, and so forth, but we wanna group these. And these become really helpful, like say in the inspector, where we only want a person to select one of those weapons. And to do that, we we'll use what is known as an enumeration. An enumeration allows us to create a list of options. For instance, the days of the week, or the months in a year. The way we do this is we first define the name of the enumeration. For our weapons, we would define it as public enum weapons, and then we'd put an open brace, and of course, after that, make sure to have your closing brace. What you're going to do is put all your weapons inside those two braces separated by a comma. The way it works is you'd say, for instance, we had a sword and a mace and a bow, we would put sword, comma, mace, comma, bow. And notice you do not need a semicolon at the end of this. And you'll also notice that each different weapon is capitalized. And this is, again, is another naming convention that is used throughout C Sharp. So you always want to capitalize your enumerations. Enumerations have the benefit of being like a constant because they have values. What C Sharp does, it assigns the first item in our enumeration as a value of zero. And the second one is a value of one, and the bow is a value of two, and so forth. And it just keeps on going up. You can actually assign your own values if you want. For instance, if we wanted the sword to be value one, we could put sword equals one. And then the mace would be two, the bow would be three, and so forth. Oftentimes, we use those values to determine how many enumerations there are. And the way we do this is we create say another, a final enumeration. And in this case, we just simply call it all weapons. And then basically we would could get the value of all weapons. If we started our sword at zero, then mace would be one, bow would be two, and our all weapons would be three. So we would know there are three weapons contained within our enumeration. Once you have your enumerations defined, using them is really easy. First, you take the name of the enumeration, which in our case is weapons, and then you would use a dot after weapons, and this is called the dot operator. We're accessing one of the actual weapons type. From there, just by pressing that dot, you'll notice we'll get a whole bunch of options listed in our code completion, and these are all our enumerations, such as sword, mace, bow, and all weapons. In our case, we'll just select sword and then that then we could use that as the basis of comparison or whatever else you need. If you need to print out the value, you can just simply print out that weapons.sword and you'll get the value of one. Now, some of you may be scratching your head, why would you use this? Let's see this in action. Here we have our hello world script and what we're going to do is we can delete this player variable here and we'll delete the switch statement here. Okay, let's cover constants first. For instance, we may want to know months, weeks, and days and keeps those in a constant because we're never going to add another month or we're never going to add more weeks. And to do this, I'd simply create a variable and we're just going to call this const. I'm not making this public because I don't want to change this in the inspector. And we put const months equals 12. For weeks, we can do const int weeks equals 52. And for days, we can do something like this. Days equals 365. Just like that. Now, if you see here, if I try to say days equals days plus one, and then I, I build this, we'll get an error. 
And you'll see here, if I come back over here and I delete this and just make this a regular variable, that error goes away. As always, we can take the results of an expression and store it into a const. For instance, if we want to know the days per week, we could do days per week. We'll give this the variable days per week, and then we'll do a cast from days divided by a cast double for weeks. And the result, what this does is it turns these ints into a doubles, and then it, it does the division and stores it into the const days per week, just like that. Pretty simple. As you can see, it's pretty self-explanatory and very useful to use within your code. You'll be using constants a lot. Okay, let's now get into enumerations. And one place I can see us really using enumerations is down here in direction. And you see in here, we have different cases. Case zero equals north, case one equals east, and so forth. This is actually not a very good programming practice. These are what we call magic numbers, meaning we're hard coding the number there, and later on, we may not have an, any idea what that number stands for. It's better to use a variable so that we can show exactly what we're trying to do. And we could create constants for all these, but it's even better to use an enumeration. Now, I'm going to put this outside of my class definition. I'm going to declare this as being public, and we put enum, like so, and we'll call this compass direction. There's more we can do with enumerations, which we'll cover in a later video. For the compass directions we're going to work with, we're going to be working with north, south, east, and west, like so. Okay, now that we have that down, we want to use this. And what we'll do is we'll create a new variable, and this variable is going to be a type of compass direction like so. And we'll simply call this player movement. Like so. Now, if we come down to our switch statement, instead of coding against an integer here, we'll call it code against player movement, like so. Now what I can do in my case statement is put compass direction dot north, because I'm referencing now the north direction. For east, we can do compass direction dot east, like so. For south, we'll do compass direction dot south. And for west, we'll do compass direction dot west. And you can see now we have our options in our code completion, and this makes it really clear what exactly is going on here you can see we're giving the character options of which directions they want to move. Now, some of you may be wondering, how does this work within the inspector? Well, I'm going to save this, and we're going to come back to Unity. We'll stop this. And what's going to happen is our, our code will be recompiled. And you can see down here in this Hello World script, we have player movement, and now we have a dropdown of all the values that we can choose. What's nice about this is that users can now only put in a range of values that we specify. They can't do, say, for direction where they would do negative one, but now they only have the options for north, south, east, and west. And we'll run this. And we'll disable. And everything works exactly as we expect it to work. You have moved east, and you can see we have this east we have selected from the player movement. Okay. Enumerations are really useful, and you, again, you'll be using them a lot in your code. And they're great because they make your code very readable. Okay, now on to your task. What, you, what I want you to do is take the last code you, you created, say the one that you created the var variable for player, and then based on whether it was player one or player two or or anything else that was not selected, the default was not selected, I want you to convert that to use enumerations. And I want you to create an enumeration for player one, player two, and not selected. And by doing this, you no longer need to have a default statement. 
And the reason for this is you are defining all the values that the user can select in your enumeration. Well, thanks again for watching. And in the next episode, we're going to be diving into loops. So buckle up. Things are going to get interesting. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. See you then.